Q is a first-in, first-out data structure. Which means if we insert element A and element B in Q, order of removal will be A and then B. The insertion operation is called NQ, while the removal operation is called DQ. The way you can't do selective removal of an element of your choice from the stack, you can't do that in Q either. Though, selective removal is possible in data structures like array and linked list. In array or linked list, you can remove or insert an element at an index x. But that's not possible in a queue. Elements are removed from a queue from the front. There is no way you can remove an element at a certain position from a queue. Let us see the operations, which are possible on a queue data structure. Primarily, there are two operations on a queue. And queuing an element which is inserting an element in the queue at the tail of the queue, and dequeuing an element, which is removing an element from the front of the queue. If there are no elements left in the queue, an error condition will be returned. Queue may be implemented using an array or linked list. If it is implemented using an array, then there is a limit on the number of elements that can be inserted into it. If it is implemented using a linked list, there is no such limit. Third operation is size. It will tell you the number of elements in the queue at any point of time. Fourth operation is called as empty. It will tell you if queue is currently empty or not. Empty means there are no elements in the queue at that instance. Fifth operation is called front. It will return you the front or first element of the queue. In subsequent slides we will see the use of all these operations. Unlike stack, we have to keep track of front and rear end. So, we need two pointers, unlike stack, where we needed only SP. In Q, we need head and tail. Head is where elements are deleted from, and tail is where elements are inserted to. We will elaborate it more with the example of implementing Q with array backing data structures. For simplicity let's take an array of size 5. Initially Q is empty. So, head and tail will both point to zeroth element of the stack. Empty condition is determined when head is equal to tail. You can see the values other operations will return. An operation NQ is performed with 5. This will insert element at current tail and increment it. Head will remain at the same place however. A number of NQs are performed. You can see how tail keeps incrementing. Now, a DQ is performed. Head is incremented further. It's immaterial, whether we actually mark element 5 as deleted or not. Incrementing head is sufficient as next DQ will be performed from the new head pointer. An NQ of 6 is performed. Next NQ will make tail cross past the limit of array. What will happen on the next NQ then? Should it return an error, as tail has already reached the limit? It is definitely unfair, if an error is returned, as Q still has space to occupy more elements. The best bet would be to wrap tail to point to the zeroth element, and subsequent NQ will store elements from there. One more NQ will increment the tail pointer further and it will point to the same location where head is pointing. Now we have run out of space in the array. And this is the limitation of implementing Q with array. Shortly, we will see how to get rid of this limitation. The pointer tail is used to track the rear of the queue. While pointer head is used to track the front of the queue. If we implement the queue using an array, tail should always be greater than head. So, Determining whether Q is empty should be easy. Whenever head and tail point to the same location it's empty. But we also saw elements can wrap around in a Q data structure. 
and hence empty condition can't be determined based on just head and tail. For example, take the following cue. This cue is empty so both tail and head are pointing to the same location. Now, let's take the cue from the previous example. Tail has become less than head because of wraparound. After an NQ of 9, head and tail are again pointing to the same location. But this queue is not empty, instead it is full. So, we cannot use head and tail pointers alone to determine empty condition. We need to maintain another attribute in the queue data structure for that. We will add another attribute size for this purpose. This can be used to evaluate both empty and full condition. When it is zero, queue is empty and when it is maximum Q is full. You can see the implementation part in the code section. We can use this attribute in conjunction with head and tail pointers also. Wrapping around the Q may seem beneficial when considering space, but it adds more complexity to the program and make it more time consuming in worst case. For example, in this Q, if we want to add more elements, we need to do a array alloc operation to increase the space of the array and copy all the wrapped around elements at the top and then modify the tail pointer. Subsequent NQS will then start from the new tail pointer. We will try to implement Q with link list. Initially, Q is empty and both head and tail will point to null. Then an NQ of 5 is done. It will create a node with 5. Its next pointer will point to null. Both head and tail will point to this node. An NQ of 6 is done. It will create a node with 6. Next, a head will point to this node. And tail will be changed to point to this node. Head will still point to the old node. Now, head and tail are both pointing to different nodes. So, all NQ operations will be done on the tail, while all DQ operations will be done on the head. Another NQ is done with 9. You can see how tail has changed again. Finally, a DQ is performed. This will make head proceed to next node and delete 5. The benefit of linked implementation is that there is no maximum limit on the size of Q and we do not have to go for wraparound. And hence no need for subsequent ray allocs when tail has reached the upper limit. So, we avoid copying the elements to the new locations. This saves a lot of time on the operations. However, node creation and pointer manipulation takes more time compared to populating an element at an index.